Hey everybody, you made it. This is the last week of our lessons um, that all that are planned. Uh, so this is week 17, um, and we're finishing up on the prop lever. First thing I wanted to say is uh, um, tomorrow I'll be at the sub place. So those of you that uh, are craving a sub, I'll tell you how it is. I hear that they're delicious still, uh, and uh, I'll give you a heads up on that. A uh, a COVID takeout gyro is what I'm going to try tomorrow. And uh, another side note, I've been talking to Mr. Skid Kicker. He owns the YouTube channel where I post my videos. He's not impressed. Somebody gave a thumbs up to the last video. And uh, he told me that he's thumbs downing the thumbs up. So he's not impressed. Uh, I like it. Don't get me wrong, I think it's great, but he was not impressed. So on with our lesson, we're talking about the power lever. And the power lever uh, has two functions. Uh, two functions in a sense that we're going to be controlling two parts of the engine. We're going to control the amount of fuel going to the engine and sometimes the propeller. But we've got a couple different modes here. And if you've been following the PowerPoint already, you would know that there is something called alpha and there's something called beta okay and the power lever is going to have to be rigged for both of those settings and sometimes refer to the other part here beta oops beta reverse is considered part of the beta system so alpha is when you're in flight and beta would be when you're on the ground that's what i want to look at today um, you have forward reverse beta and only forward alpha. So you can kind of see in this slide where it explains it a little bit better. You want to take a look at it and see the blade angle and the positioning of the power lever. All right, so I'm going to slide through here. So taking a look at the power lever, this is a pictorial diagram just showing you um, where those inputs are going on the engine. So the first one that's easy, we know that the power lever controls the fuel. So there are push-pull rods that go and move the fuel control, and that's going to adjust the amount of fuel going into the engine. You're going to burn more fuel, make more power. The other portion, when we're working in beta mode, is it's coming down to this PPC. And that PPC, as you can see up here, says propeller pitch control. So remember we talked about how there's a lot of work for the pilot if he's flying and moving the levers to maintain the RPM is really hard with a variable pitch prop. That's why we wanted a constant speed prop. Well, the variable pitch prop is fine if you're on the ground. If you want to control uh, the speed be on the ground for taxiing, the pilot will be controlling the blade angle to taxi the aircraft. So where we, maybe we don't want to add much fuel into the engine, we want to control the blade angle. It's much easier to taxi that way for finer adjustments. So that's why the power lever will be integrated into the prop pitch controls. And that's where this slide comes in. So you can see the linkage to the power lever. That's where the power lever push-pull rod will be coming in and controlling that beta valve. And when the power lever is brought back, we don't have a lot of fuel going to the engines and it's not gonna be turning very quickly. So the prop governor itself will be in a perpetual underspeed condition. So let's go to the slide where we show that. And here I've illustrated it here where you can see the prop governor is in the underspeed condition. And that's how you know that we're below alpha mode operational range. So it's gonna be in a perpetual underspeed condition. The engine oil supply is going to be coming up okay, and around the pump and coming to the beta valve. Now that beta valve in this position here, when it's, when it's centered, there's no oil getting to the prop, so the prop angle will be maintained. Now if the pilot wants to control the power lever and move it, maybe to speed up or slow down the aircraft when it's taxiing, we may want to increase or decrease the blade angle. And at the same time, we always have a pathway of oil to flow through the pilot valve. 
because it's in that underspeed condition. So if the pilot was to pull the power lever back, obviously pulling it back, we think, okay, yeah, we want to slow the aircraft down. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So when that takes place, of course, we want to decrease the blade angle. So let's follow the oil flow as it goes through this governor. And notice the beta valve is in now. And oil is allowed to flow to the propeller. All right and change the blade angle to a lower degree. So that's through the movement of the power lever, and that's in the aft position. So if we move it forward, that's what the next slide is, you can see that the beta valve is being pulled out. So if we go back, beta valve in, beta valve out, beta valve in, beta valve out. and when the beta valve is pulled out, oil can't go to the propeller. And of course we're asking for the blades to increase their angle of attack and their blade angle. So oil has to be dumped from the prop. So let's see if there's a pathway for that oil to be dumped from the propeller. And you can, of course we're going through the pilot valve. And you can see that because the valve is moved out of the way, it can then dump back to the gearbox. So that is the simple operation of the beta valve in order to help control the blade angle. Now it's really difficult for me to explain the response of the propeller. The propeller always wants to center the beta valve. So that's where this carbon block comes in. And if I can, oops, if I can delete this, this carbon block here it's allowed to move forward and back, but I can't show you that until we get into the classroom. So it's really hard to, to explain it on the PowerPoint slides. But in response, if the, the linkage was to move to, to pull the beta valve out, the response would be that the carbon block would move in the opposite direction to center the beta valve. I think they would call this something like a walking beam design. So for every input, there would be a response in that the beta would, beta valve would always want to center.